Hey everybody, here we are in Unit 3 with our first topic, which is consumption. To understand consumption, economists use a consumption function, okay? Once again, a function is just a relationship. It's a relationship between two variables in which one of those variables is going to determine the value of the other variable. Or let me say that slightly differently, in which the value of one of the variables is going to determine the value of the other variable. Okay, so one of those variables is certainly going to be consumption, right? That's what we're talking about. So what is the other variable? Well, the other variable is going to be the independent variable, and it's going to be the thing that is the number one determinant of consumption. That's what economists want to put on the graph. That's what they want to put into the function is, hey, what is the number one thing that determines consumption? And what is that thing? Our disposable income. And hopefully that makes sense to us. We just think about it. Hey, our income is probably the number one thing that determines our consumption. A lot of times you'll hear you kind of say our current disposable income, but really that's just disposable income. I'm going to put current disposable income, but nothing fancy there. That's just what we're currently making. So on the graph, I'm going to put current disposable income. And since it is the independent variable, I'm going to put it on the horizontal axis. I know that's a little bit surprising because economists sometimes mess that up, at least when the curves are supply and demand curves. But hey, this is not a supply or a demand curve or an aggregate demand or aggregate supply curve, and since it doesn't have supply or demand in it, we're going to do it just the way a mathematician would do it. We're going to put the independent variable, current disposable income, right here on the horizontal axis, okay? Once again, what is this thing? It is the number one thing that determines our level of consumption. Well, what are we going to put on the vertical axis? Consumption. Sometimes you'll see aggregate consumption spending or aggregate household spending. For me, I'm just going to write consumption because that's what consumption is, okay? It is aggregate household spending out there, at least in a macroeconomic uh, context. So I've got my level of consumption here and level of current disposable income. I also like to just kind of note what are the units of measurement here. Well, disposable income is measured in dollars. Consumption is measured in dollars. So think of these values as dollars and think of these values also as dollars. All right. Now I want to get the actual function on the graph. I've got the graph set up. I'm ready for the function. And the first thing I want to ask myself is, hey, if our level of current disposable income is zero, what is going to be our level of consumption? And we might first say, well, zero. If you don't have any income, you're not going to consume anything. But that's not so true. Actually, you'll beg or borrow, okay? If you don't have income, you're gonna do whatever you can to still consume. You're still gonna wanna buy some food, okay? So your consumption is actually gonna be positive even when current disposable income is zero. So I'm gonna put an amount right there, okay? And just, it, I just put a, at a, any place. It doesn't really matter because we're just being conceptual right now. But an amount of consumption we're gonna get even when current disposable income is zero. And we're gonna call that our level of autonomous consumption. I'm just putting an A for the word autonomous, but that A stands for autonomous consumption. It's our amount of consumption that is autonomous to current disposable income, meaning, meaning it's the amount of consumption we get even if our current disposable income is zero. Because once again, no income doesn't mean no consumption. You're gonna beg or borrow to get some money to buy some food. Okay, so there it is, a positive amount. Now I'm going to put the consumption function, and my next question is, well, what's going to be the relationship between these? Is it going to be direct, as in when one goes up, does the other one go up, or is it going to be inverse? When one goes down, the other one goes down. Well, this relationship is, of course, direct. When our disposable income goes up, our consumption goes up, so we're going to get a positively sloped line. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my yardstick to try and make somewhat of a pretty curve right here and that will do. That is our consumption function line. So I'm going to title this line C for consumption. Okay, And what you can see what this line is telling us is this vertical distance right here from the horizontal axis to the line, the horizontal axis to the line, okay, you should be thinking kind of vertical distances right now these vertical distances from this axis to the consumption function is our amount of consumption at each of these levels of disposable income, okay? And of course, as current disposable income goes up, our consumption goes up, positively sloped line. Now let's talk a little bit more about the slope, okay? Well, what is the slope? The slope is rise over run, okay? Rise, 
That's consumption because it's on the vertical axis over run, current disposable income. Well, if we take a look at this, when we run a certain amount, okay, i.e. change disposable income some amount, we're going to get some amount of change in consumption. Okay, So there's my rise, that is my run. So when we get some change in disposable income, we're going to get some change in consumption. So our slope, one more time, rise over want, run, is change in consumption over change in disposable income, which is a very important expression in economics. This represents our marginal propensity to consume, our marginal propensity to consume. Now what does this actually mean, this marginal propensity to consume? Well, marginal means one more, and it's talking about one more dollar of disposable income. For every one more dollar of disposable income, what is our propensity, maybe likelihood, okay, to use that dollar towards consumption? Sometimes I like to think of the P as percentage, and you can kind of say it this way. Marginal, for every one more dollar of disposable income, what percentage of that are we going to take towards consumption? Now, I want to remind you that word P is actually propensity, which is kind of like likelihood, but it's okay to kind of think of it also as percentage, right? For every one more dollar of disposable income, what percentage of that dollar are we going to take towards consumption? And for right now, I'm just going to put 0.8. Of course, it could be 0.9, it could be 0.7, 0 0.5, but for right now, I'm just going to pick a number out and put 0.8. This also brings us to another important expression, which is the marginal propensity to save. Once again, marginal is still pointing out for one more dollar in income, okay, what is the percentage we would likely take towards savings? Well, this is our delta savings over delta DI. That's basically what I just said. And if the MPC is 0.8, since there's only two things we do with our disposable income, we either spend it, okay, or we save it. That's it. That's the only two things. Well, this is going to have to be 0.2 because when I add up my MPS and my MPC, I've got to get one, all right? For every $1 of disposable income, 80% will go towards consumption, 20% towards savings. Once again, these are just numbers I'm picking for right now just as we're talking about it in this video, okay? So, got our major parts of this. Now I want to actually give the expression of the function, okay? What you'll see is we'll often say functions are expressed like this. Y equals mx plus b, where y is the dependent variable, m is the slope, x is the independent variable, and b is the intercept. And it should be the intercept of whatever axis that you put the dependent variable on. And since our dependent variable is on the vertical axis, that's the intercept of the vertical axis. So what is our consumption function? It is consumption equals, what's our slope? Marginal propensity to consume. What is our x? It is disposable income. Okay, sometimes you'll see y with a sub d. Okay, y for income, sub d for disposable. I just put di for disposable income. Plus our vertical intercept, what is that? That is autonomous consumption. So there it is, that is our algebraic expression of our consumption function. We're going to have one more video on the consumption function. I hope you take a look at it, and it will be with you in just a second. All right, thank you.